I understand that you're interested in my experience of Beijing's transnational repression, or what we also call foreign interference. Like millions of Canadians and Americans, I'm the child of immigrants. My mother immigrated from the Netherlands, and my father immigrated from Hong Kong. I've extended family in both the Netherlands and Hong Kong. I've been elected since 2004 to represent the district of Wellington Halton Hills, and have served in the federal cabinet and chaired several parliamentary committees. In 2020, I was appointed the official opposition's shadow minister for foreign affairs. Since then, my criticisms of Beijing have increased in response to President Xi's increasing violations of the rules-based international order and its repression in the PRC and abroad. In November 2020, I introduced a motion adopted by the House of Commons calling on the Canadian government to make a decision on Huawei, on Huawei's involvement in Canada's 5G network within 30 days and to develop a robust plan to combat China's growing foreign operations in Canada and its increasing intimidation of Canadians living in Canada. Several months later in February, I introduced another motion which the House also adopted, recognizing Beijing's actions towards Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims as a genocide. In May this year, I learned that a PRC diplomat working out of the PRC consulate in Toronto had since 2020 been gathering information to further target me and my family in Hong Kong. Last month, I learned I was the target of a disinformation campaign in May of this year on the Chinese social, on the Chinese language social media platform WeChat. The Canadian Department of Foreign Affairs concluded that Beijing's role in this information, this disinformation operation was highly probable. But my experience is but one case of Beijing's interference in Canada. Many, many other cases go unreported and unnoticed, and the victims suffer in silence. This has serious implications for the approximately 4% of Canadians, some 1.7 million Canadians of Chinese descent. Beijing targets these diaspora groups using a variety of tactics. One tactic is to target the many Chinese international students in Canada coaching them into participating in foreign interference threat activities on university campuses, such as targeting pro-Hong Kong democracy activists and Tibetan and Uyghur human rights campaigners. Other tactics include targeting Chinese language media and social media in Canada, the establishment of illegal police stations in Canada, the wrongful detention and arrest and detention of Canadians, such as Michael Kovrig, Michael Spaver, and the currently detained Hussein Jalil, whose whereabouts is completely unknown. And another tactic includes coercing Canadians on Canadian soil back to the People's Republic of China. Recently, the PRC has used a tactic of creating wanted lists and offering bounties of the arrest of those from Canada. These various tactics are a serious and concerted effort to interfere with democratic activity in Canada and leave millions of Canadians at risk of being intimidated, coerced, silenced, and unable to enjoy the basic democratic rights and freedoms guaranteed in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in our Constitution. These tactics cannot be tolerated in a free and sovereign country. Canada must work more closely with democratic allies like the United States in countering Beijing's efforts to interfere in our democratic life. Foreign interference is a serious national security threat to Canada. It threatens our economy, our long-term prosperity, social cohesion, our parliament, and our elections. It requires a suite of measures to combat, including closer cooperation amongst allied democracies. Canada must work toward a stronger defense and security partnership with the United States and allies. We must look for every opportunity to strengthen this partnership, to meet the challenge of rising authoritarianism, and to preserve our fundamental freedoms, our democracy, and the rule of law. Thank you very much.